Hello, this is Lino Tadros from The Training Boss and in this video I'm going to explain the file system behind a prompt flow. I think it's important to understand uh, how this entire visual way of dealing with prompt flow translates into files and how you can actually deal with them one by one. So let's go ahead and get started. Best thing to do is to open up here. I'm going to go ahead and open up my Azure AI Studio. I already have a project created. If you don't know how to start a create uh, a brand new projects or a, a brand new Azure AI hub, please take a look at the other videos we have inside of this playlist. It will show you how to do all that. But for right now, I already have a project. So I'm going to open up this project and I'm going to go to prompt flow and I would like to go ahead and create a brand new flow. And I'm going to make it very simple. I'm just going to create a chat flow, no multi uh, round Q&A or anything like that. Just a very simple hello world chat flow. Let's create this one. Let's give it a name. I'm going to keep it as flow created based on today's date. That's fine with me. Let's go ahead and, and click on create. And then in a few seconds, we will have a very simple um, um, system in here that has a graph for the front flow. Uh, so we will have inputs, we have outputs and the chat, which is the LLM node itself. If you take a look at the LLM node, we can set the connection. I already created a deployment for GPT 4.0. So let's go ahead and choose that. That is the my connection. The deployment is uh, GPT 4.0 and maybe we'll change the maximum token to make it 1000. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save all that. Notice that my prompt for that specific LLM says you are a helpful assistant and then it brings in the chat history, brings in the input from uh, the input node um, and the assistant will answer and then it will keep that in the loop to keep answering your questions and um, and the question itself will be passed based on the input as you can see in here. So we have our inputs, we have our outputs and we have our simple LLM to be able to do that. Let's go ahead and start a compute session really quickly. And when it comes back, I'm going to start a regular uh, chat session and see how all the stuff works. All right, let's go ahead and start a chat session in here and I'm going to tell it, for instance, uh, uh, tell me a joke about, let's say fruits. Okay, and then we'll push enter. And now that's going to go to our GPT 4.0 and it will take that uh, prompt, add it to the bottom and it will answer hopefully with a funny joke. Let's see if it, uh, it's funny enough. <laughs> All right, sure, here a fruit uh, joke for you. Uh, why did the bananas go to the doctor? Because it wasn't peeling well. All right, that is hilarious. All right, <laughs> sounds good. The goal here now, I want to find out between my inputs, my outputs, my LLM node, and all of these things, how did that translate really into files? So I can hopefully in the future show you a video on how to do uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment, whether you're going to use GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps or something like that. So notice if I close down the chat, all the way at the top above the graph, there is a tab called Files. If I open up these files, it will show you all the files associated with that specific prompt flow. So that's a great news. That means I don't have to do everything in here uh, visually. I can actually download this, maybe a zip file that contains all these files, and I can actually uh, do the whole thing again in Visual Studio Code or in even in Notepad if I want to. So first of all, the requirements.txt is empty right now, but can you imagine actually writing a, a more sophisticated prompt flow that has access to LangChain or has the access to semantic kernel or you want to bring in some machine learning um, kind of uh, packages for instance so you can actually use the requirements of text like you use it in Python you can just put the whole list of different things or packages that you'd like to bring in and that will automatically get executed when uh, when when the whole prompt flow executes also there is a flow meta.yaml file very important file as well and that think of it as a description of the template that you're using in our case in here we're bringing this from um, a power flow stage production and the template itself is the template chat flow it's not a standard flow it's not an evaluation flow so it explains all the stuff in the schema in here of the yaml file the important one for me really is the flow dag.yaml if i click on this guy it will go back to the visual implementation of that yaml file but you can go all the way to the top and say show me that in raw file mode if i uh, click on that let me save this first and this is the representation of everything you see on the left side all these nodes that is the representation in yaml it has the inputs it has the outputs it has the node for the llm It's bringing in gpt 4.0 as you can see and that is the name of my connection everything has been put in here including the environment um, requirements for from the requirements.txt file as well 
Sounds good. Finally, the prompt itself, if I click on uh, this uh, Jinja 2 file, click on it, there is your helpful assistant with all the history, uh, the inputs and the outputs and the questions coming in as well. So if I can actually get all of these, I can actually create all my prompts manually in these files and upload them as well. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that. I'm going to go back here at the top and we'll say download this and it will actually package everything in a zip file and the zip file will be available for me here in Chrome or in uh, Edge or whatever you're using. I'm going to click on that and there it is. I'm going to go ahead and open up this. Let me bring it in and there is the zip file. I'm going to right click on it and the first thing I'm going to do before I forget, I'm going to unblock the file so we don't have problems later on with accessibility. We'll say apply. Okay. And now let's go ahead and actually open uh, or extract the zip file. I'm going to say extract. Let me put it also on the uh, downloads folder is fine with me. And there it is. All right. So in here I have all the four files. I also have a prompt flow. This has to do with, with the X and Y coordinates of the graph where it is in case you move things right and left so you can remember. It's not that important. Also all the runs if you have made changes to the flow.dagyaml itself. So in here I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open this file inside of uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code for instance. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to maximize it and you'll notice my requirements is empty like it was before. There is the meta, there is the DAG file for the flow, everything is in here and even the chat uh, Jinja2 file is in here. So I'm going to say you are a helpful assistant. I'm going to say you are um, an AI bot reply as, as a, a pirate. Alrighty, you can imagine what you can actually do. You can make changes to the prompt. You can add more information. You can actually change the DAG itself. Let me do a control S to save this. I can actually change my connection. Maybe I want to use something other than GPT, maybe Llama 2, Llama 3, whatever, based on, of course, deployments that you have made already. So all of these can be done. And I'm going to save this and we we'll go ahead and uh, minimize this for right now. And let's go back to our flow and say, I'd like to create a brand new flow. So I'm going to go to uh, prompt flows. And in here, we'll say, let's go ahead and create a new one. But this time, I'm going to go all the way down to say upload from local. We'll say upload that. It's a folder or you can zip up everything and put it in a zip file and upload the zip file itself. You can do it either way. In my case, I didn't zip it up. I'm just going to upload the whole folder. There it is. This is the one I just worked on. We'll say upload. And now we will say, yes, go ahead and upload that. And then I can give it a name. And the name, let's go ahead and give it, for instance, 76-Lino, um, for instance, in here. So we can recognize it. And it's not a standard flow. It's a chat flow. And I'm going to say upload. And we will wait a few seconds. And now I'm going to get a brand new flow that contains all the information I added from Visual Studio Code, whether it's the chat uh, Jinja 2 or the, uh, the, the DAG flow or anything like that. Great. Let's go ahead and, and go in here. I'm going to minimize this now. There is my input. There is my output. There is the chat. And if I go to the chat, you are an AI bot reply as a pirate. I'm going to go ahead and start the compute session. I just want you to think beyond this simple uh, specific test that we are doing here. How that will work when we do CI CD, when we have development environment, QA environment, production environment, and how can I push things using GitHub Actions and Azure DevOps? So this is just an intro to show you what is the relationship between files and what you see in the prompt flow. I think it's very important to have a pretty good feeling of what's going on because we, in future videos, we're going to go in, to town with that stuff trying to do CI, CD um, with uh, promotion from one stage to the other, from dev to QA to production based on that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. We'll say chat. And in here we'll say, tell me a joke about fruits and let's see if it will use a pirate uh, tone to answer that so we'll see that in a few seconds it's actually making the call it will respect my prompt as uh, as a pirate and hopefully it will come back with a different kind <laughs> of answer than the previous one based on this new fraud R. okay good there you go why did the pirate refuse to eat the fruit salad because it had too many peelings and he couldn't find any treasure in it. Har, har, har. All right, sounds good. We'll pass it, okay? We said it's a great technology. We didn't say it was funny. All right, sounds good. I hope this was useful to you. Please go ahead and like and subscribe. And I look forward to creating more videos for you about Azure AI Studio and PromptFlow. Thank you.